then there are those for whom the term God has no practical meaning. The atheist, who disbelieves God's existence. The agnostic, who lives life accepting that adequate knowledge of God may never arrive. Or the non-believer, who sees participation in a religious community and a theistic theology as mutually inclusive. For these tens of millions in our country alone, we need to be aware that this term may present a barrier to communication and mutual understanding. I count myself among this latter group. As a child, raised Christian, I accepted the Nazarene into my heart. As a teen, however, I grew disillusioned with a distant father God who allowed misery, hate, and violence to run rampant in our world today. As an adult, I rejected all notions of God as an outdated, outmoded human concept created to institutionalize oppression and localize power into the hands of the few. Many years passed before I moved beyond the anger and hurt I felt when confronted with the term God. So I understand how some people might feel entering our worship space. I know the tension in one's vulnerable core longing to join with others in the search for truth and meaning. I have experienced that erection of mental barriers in the mind to unwanted messages. I have been that outsider, that other, unwilling to bend his will to that of the prevailing dogma surrounding him. I know the pain of rejection, of betrayal, even when unintended, by caring people of faith. Sadly, language does hinder communication and understanding. Love is a term with many meanings, and often misconstrued in its various contexts. When I say, I love you, from this pulpit, the assumed meaning differs significantly than speaking those same words at a gathering of friends and family, during the toil of shared labor, or over a candlelit dinner. And when we proclaim that God is love, one can well imagine these and many more meanings found within the infinity of human circumstance and emotion. In his 1960 book, The Four Loves, C.S. Lewis discussed the ancient Greek terms defining types of love. For instance, affection or storage describes funds, such as that shared between family members or people who have become familiar with each other. Friendship describes the bond between people who share a common interest or activity. The Greek word philia, which is the root for the name Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, describes this type of love. Eros, the root word of our modern word erotic, means romantic love, passionate love, with sensual desire and longing. Eros, however, does not have to be sexual in nature. Eros can represent a love for someone for whom you feel more than the love of friendship. Plato added an appreciation of beauty within that person as Eros. Lastly, charity, or agape, often referred to a general affection rather than the attraction suggested by Eros. Lewis saw agape as the greatest of loves, a specifically Christian virtue. His chapter on agape focused on the need to subordinate the other forms of love 
to the love of God, who is full of charitable love. Lewis compared love with a garden, charity with the gardening utensils, the lover as the gardener, and God as the elements of nature. Now I suspect long before Lewis's analysis, our universalist forebears embraced this interpretation of agape. For them, God is love, emphasized ultimate love, felt for the source of love itself. Universalists long plowed these fields of justice, planting the seeds to improve the human condition, cultivating the rights of the oppressed, and harvesting the brotherhood and sisterhood of humankind in common purpose. So, in my garden, I welcome any definition of God, especially from those who resist the concept entirely. I cultivate the notion that God merely represents a term we use as a shortcut to encompass all of the magnificent mysteries of life that bring us together and through which we may experience moments of joy, of insight, and of peace. And my intentional use of the term allows me to walk hand in hand, not only with those of my own faith family, but with people from other religious traditions to effect meaningful change in the world. Standing on the Side of Love is a public advocacy campaign recently created by the Unitarian Universalist Association that harkens back to this attitude and commitment to agape. As the campaign materials explain, we live in a time of great hope and possibility, yet our communities are threatened by the increased prevalence of acts motivated by fear and hate. No one should be dehumanized through acts of exclusion, oppression, or violence because of their identities. In public debates over issues such as immigration, and the rights of gays, lesbians, bisexuals, and transgendered persons. Religious people must stand on the side of love and call for respect, inclusion, and compassion.